Our psalm of the suffering Savior for this evening is Psalm 65. It's a psalm written by David to the choir master. It's meant to be a song. It's not only a song of David, it's a song of our Savior. In it, David prays to the God for when his iniquities prevail against him, that God's the only one who can atone for his sin. We see that in the life of the Savior. He is the only one who can forgive sins, and he has authority on earth to do it. David says in the psalm, blessed is the one you choose to come near, to bring into your courts. We see our Savior in his ministry, choosing the lame and the paralyzed and even the infants and welcoming them into his presence. The psalm speaks of when the great storms rise and life that our God is the one who is able to save because he's the one who created the mountains. He's the one who controls even the waves and stills the sea. We see that happening with our Savior. Our Savior is the one who calls to the sea and it is still. He's the one, the people at the farthest end of the sea, the ends of the earth put their hope in, David says. And that happens with our Savior. Even those in far off countries put their hope in him. David prays to the God, the one who makes the hills drip with rain and grain come up in abundance. He provides food to his people. We see our Savior doing the same. Even in desolate places in the wilderness, he's the one who provides in abundance for his people. As we look at this psalm of our suffering Savior, we encourage you to look to Jesus and to find in him the Lord of creation and of salvation. Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall our bows be performed. O oh, you who hears prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. And when he returned to Capernaum after several days, report went out that he was at home. and Many gathered so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And they brought to him a paralytic carried by four men. But when they were not able to draw near to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof that was above him. And having made an opening, they let down the bed the paralytic was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now there were sitting there some scribes who questioned in their hearts, saying, Why does this man talk like this? This is blasphemy. No one can forgive sins but God alone. And immediately Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were questioning thus within themselves. And he said, Why do you question in your hearts? For which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or rise, take up your bed, and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your bed, and go home. And he rose, and immediately took up his bed, and went out before them all. And they all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we've never seen anything like this. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. And he also told this parable concerning those who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed thus, God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, adulterers, unjust, extortioners, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I tithe from all that I get. 
The tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went home justified rather than the other. For the one who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And they were bringing even infants to Jesus that he might touch them. And the disciples, when they saw it, rebuked them. And calling them to himself, he said, Let the little children come to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. But truly I say to you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter it. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. And that day, when it was evening, he said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowds, they took him with them in the boat. And there were other boats with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that it, the boat was already filling up. And he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And there was a great calm. And he said to the disciples, Why are you afraid? Have you yet no faith? And they were filled with fear. They said to themselves, Who is this then, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And they went across to the other side, to the country of the Gerardines. And as Jesus was stepping out of the boat, there came to him, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit whom no one has been able to bind. For many have bound him in chains and shackles, but he wrenches the chains apart and breaks the shackles to pieces. No one has been able to subdue him. Night and day, he is in the tombs and on the mountains, crying out and cutting himself with stones. And seeing Jesus from afar, he ran to him and fell down and said to him, What have you to do with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. And Jesus said to him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for we are many. And then he begged him not to send him out into the country. Now there was a great herd of pigs feeding on the hillside. And they said, Send us into the pigs, let us go into them gave them permission. And the whole herd, about 4,000 of them, rushed down the bank into the sea and drowned into the sea. And the herdsmen fled and told of it in the country and in the city. And people were coming to him to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the man who had been possessed by the demon the legion, sitting there, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen what had happened began to describe what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs, and they began to beg him to depart from their region. And as Jesus was getting into the boat, 
the man who had been possessed by the demon, begged that he might be with him. And he did not permit it. But said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went and proclaimed in the Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain. For so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. And in those days, there again gathered a great crowd, and they had nothing to eat. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, have compassion on this crowd, for they have nothing to eat, and they have already been with me for three days. And if I send them home hungry, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples said to him, How is one to feed these people with bread in this desolate place? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit on the ground and taking the seven loaves and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the people and they set them before the crowds and also having some small fish, having blessed them, he gave them the disciples to set before the people and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up broken pieces left over seven baskets full and there were four thousand people and he sent them away and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went across the sea and the Pharisees came to him to argue with him Seeking a sign to test him. Jesus sighed deeply in his spirit saying, why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And leaving them, he got into the boat and went to the other side. But they had forgotten to take bread. They had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them saying, watch out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. His disciples began talking to one another about the fact that they had no bread. And aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking amongst yourselves about the fact that you have no bread? Do you not understand or perceive? Are you hard of heart? Do you have eyes but not see? Do you have ears but not hear? Do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you take up? And they said 12. And the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And said to them, do you not yet understand? The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. 